ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning and welcome to the uh, Animal Aid uh, Christmas Fair. Uh, just a quick introduction before, before um, Vanessa gets started. Um, Vanessa Hudson, uh, leader of the Animal Welfare Party. Uh, Vanessa, uh, likewise, is a producer, director in the media industry as well. Uh, Vanessa's involvement with the party began as a documentary project in 2009 to join the party. And so impressed by its success in the EU elections, she took over the leadership in 2010. Um, Vanessa's talk today uh, is with regards to political representation for animals, the Animal Welfare, Welfare Party's bid for the May uh, 2014 EU elections. Uh, Vanessa Hudson. I'm really always talking about today is for me and many people in our party is about species. And what our party wants is an end to speciesism. And we say that's the assignment of different values or rights or giving special consideration to individuals solely on the basis of their membership of a species. And right now, we give special consideration to members of the human race and not to animals. And it's that battle that we're fighting, and that's the core of what our party is about, ending species. Now politics, we know, we're acutely aware that most people in London and the UK are not very interested in politics, and that's borne out by the statistics. Voter turnout at the last EU election, which was in 2009, naturally was 34.7%. Political engagement matters, because the practices that cause the greatest animal suffering today are absolutely, completely legal. I'm talking about intensive farming, I'm talking about animal experimentation, and that impacts on the lives of not millions, but billions of animals in Europe alone. And to put an end to that suffering, the suffering that goes on that is completely legal, we must work to change the law. Now, why political engagement matters? Legislation for better animal welfare often happens at the EU level. And EU regulations do and can determine what is and isn't possible in the UK. And in many ways, the EU is actually now leading the way in terms of world animal welfare and signalling to other countries in the world that they need to change. But amazingly, despite this, despite the recent successes that have been made in animal welfare in the EU, Voter apathy at the EU, the EU elections is going down. Every time we have an EU election, voter turnout goes down. So let's look, let's recap on what, why we say it is worth being involved. 2007, there was an EU-wide ban on real waste across the EU. 2012, just last year, Bradley Page was an EU-wide ban. 2013, South Storms, an EU-wide ban. And then also 2013, a ban on cosmetics testing on animals, an EU-wide sales ban. Now, that's four amazing pieces of legislation that have happened because of the hard work of people in the EU who believe that they could change things through politics and through the EU Parliament. Now, I'm not saying that means all is well and good and everything's perfect. Of course it doesn't. It's just a tiny beginning. But I would rather have that than nothing. And when I say that we're influencing the rest of the world, what happens in the EU influences the rest of the world. Let's look at one example, because the ripples of what happens are felt around the rest of the world. January 2013, that's January this year, the first country that introduced a ban, on, a sales ban on, the, on cosmetics set on animals was Israel. Israel came first, and then the domino effect, the EU, March 2013. An EU-wide ban on testing and sale of cosmetics tested on animals. And then, just a few months later, June 2013, India bans testing of cosmetics and ingredients on animals. That's not a sales ban yet, but it's still an amazing ban. And what does that do? It points up to Australia, to the US, to Canada. Hey, if a country like India, with all the social problems that it has, can introduce a ban on cosmetics tested on animals, well, why can't the US? And it blows out the water the notion that you have to deal with human problems first before you deal with animal problems. Actually, they're not mutually exclusive, and you can do both at the same time. And we were so happy that India managed to do that hot on the heels of the EU wide gap. 
And let me remind you again, voter turnout at the last EU election, 34.7%. And that breaks my heart. Why does it break my heart? Because I'm a woman, for one. And because less than 100 years ago, women like me did not have the vote. 1908, Emily Pankhurst arrested because she believed women should have the right to vote, and that right to vote was something worth having. 1913, 100 years ago, death of Emily Davis, and she threw herself under the King's Horse, died a week later. But she threw herself under the King's Horse because she thought having the right to vote was important enough, and it was important enough for her to lose her life over it. It wasn't until 1928 that women received the vote here in the UK on the same terms as men. So how on earth did we get to a point where 34.7% of people are voting, 65% of people are? I think that's a crying shame. I think if you're not voting, you have to have a damn good reason that your beliefs and thoughts are not voting are right. You have to be really <coughs> sure that that's the right way to go. Because it's not you, then who? It's not you who's going to stand up and make a stand for animals through the legislative bodies that we have, then who else is going to do it? If it's not us, the top 8% of the richest people in the world, that's who we are. We've had the benefit of free education, free schooling, free health care. We are here in a place in the world where we have all the tools, everything that we need to do something for animals. And if not you, then who? Now we do have a model for success. The Animal Welfare Party is based on the Party for the Year in the Netherlands. They were established in 2002. They're the first animal welfare party in the world to be elected to national parliament. They're also the fastest growing political party in the Netherlands. They have representation in the Dutch Senate, the House of Representatives, and provincial and city councils. They have 20 odd elected representatives at various levels of government there. The PVDD of the Netherlands have done extremely well for animal welfare and they are our model for success. PVDD yet, hasn't yet been elected to the EU Parliament. Like us, PVDD will contest the May 2014 EU elections. And one of the ways that PVD, PVDD works is to act as a pacemaker in Parliament, encouraging other political parties to move faster when it comes to animal welfare. And PVDD is a testimonial party, and we are also proudly a testimonial party. Like PVDD, our mission is to drive the agenda on animals, to raise the bar on animal-related policies. And we, what we want to do is force other parties to either adopt or improve on their existing animal welfare policies. And like no other party <coughs> you've ever heard of, success for us means up and going home. It means no longer having to exist as a political party because all the other parties have taken on board our policies, we've done what we set out to do, we can go back to our day jobs. We are a testimonial party in that respect. Now some people say, oh, but is it a single issue party? Isn't caring about animals just a single issue? Are well, there more important issues in the world? Well, when people say that to me, I think that reflects how speciesist they are. Because let's look at the figures for one second. There are 63 million humans living in the UK, and they are hugely, hugely outnumbered by the 900 million farm animals, the 3.5 million animals in research labs, the 20 million plus pets, that's dogs, cats, rabbits, etc. And they are all without a voice. Of course, we have policies on the environment, and some of our policies are promoting plant-based diets, are the most ecologically sound policies that I've heard of. We have policies on education, health, welfare, economy, and transport <coughs> as well. Yes. So the UK, we, are, we like to consider ourselves a nation of animal lovers, and in some respects that's true. 1822, we were the first country in the world to implement laws protecting animals. 1824, the world's first animal welfare charity began. It was then called the SPCA, later became the RSP. The percentage of vegetarians in the UK is the second highest in Europe after Italy, it's between 7 and 10% of the population. It might actually be higher than that, we might be the highest population in the UK. Most of the studies done are self determining, so you say whether you're vegetarian or vegan or not. Um, so we know that we would be strong in terms of vegetarianism in the UK, and we like 
Um, you might think that if an animal welfare party can make it here, well, it should be anywhere, here, if, if anywhere in Europe. But it's not. The Netherlands is leading the way. So why is the Netherlands leading the way? And why are we lagging behind? Well, in the UK, I first passed the post electoral system that we use in general elections. It makes it extremely difficult for small parties to make any kind of headway. Look how long it took the Lib Dems to make any headway. Look how long it's taken the Greens to make any kind of headway. It's completely skewed against small parties like ours. Now, the Netherlands, they use a system of proportional representation for their national elections. And that makes it easier for small parties to make progress. Now, why are we so excited about the EU elections and not the general elections? Well, because the EU elections use a system of proportional representation. And we're very happy about that. That kind of system is much more favourable to us. And if we are going to be elected to any parliament, it's much more likely to be to the EU parliament first, before our national parliament. So, are we alone? No, we're not. People sometimes say, oh, you're just some sort of fringe group operating on their own. <laughs> this is not possible. It's never going to happen. Well, no, there are all these people who believe it's going to happen as well. There are animal welfare parties in Spain, Germany, Portugal, Austria, Australia, Denmark, Italy, Canada, and the US. Two in the US. And so they're springing up all the time all around the world. Someone from India contacted me recently and said they were thinking about starting an animal welfare party in India. We get people from South America writing saying they're going to do the same thing. So this is a worldwide movement. This is not going to change. This is going forward. Now, our beliefs and aims. Well, first and foremost, our most fundamental principle is that animal abuse must end. And that animals are no longer regarded as property. So this little calf who's just been born, he belongs to himself or his mum. He doesn't belong to the farmer, and we have no right to take him away from his mum before he's even old enough to walk and send him off to live in a real crate. That is animal abuse, and that must end. Our second fundamental principle is that until the majority of people are ready to recognise the former point, and whilst millions of animals are exploited every day, the very least that animals deserve right now is appropriate species-specific husbandry and care based on the five freedoms. And that does not detract from our eventual aim, which is to end all animal exploitation. It simply recognises that in the meantime, any improvement is better than none. But fundamentally, we don't have the right to abuse animals. Our party is against speciesism. So, we have four strategies to advance our aims politically. We want to end harmful animal use, we want to implement direct welfare improvement, we want to encourage sustainable development, and we want to support socially progressive policies on non-animal related issues. So what are our key policies? Let me run through some of them to give you a taste of what they are. We want to redirect subsidies from livestock and fisheries farming into plant-based agriculture. We want to phase out farming practices that have poor welfare consequences for animals. We want to ban the foie gras, both the production, the import, and the trade across the EU. We want to phase out live animal export. We want CCTV for all slaughterhouses. We want a ban on slaughter without pre signing and that includes religious slaughter. We want mandatory food labelling with info on animal welfare, the impact on the environment, and food miles. We want to promote healthy, plant-based lifestyles in schools, Place the public service and the workplace. We want to phase out animal experimentation. This is key. The government, the, our own government here in the UK, promised to reduce the number of animal experiments. They haven't. They've gone up since they changed to power. We want binding targets for reduction. We want proper funding and support for alternatives because we're never going to phase out animal experiments unless we properly put the money and support into alternatives. We want increased penalties those people who are convicted of animal cruelty. Here in the UK, the maximum sentence is six months. We say that's not enough. It should be treated like a serious crime, like a crime against a human being. We need longer sentences. We want a ban on puppy farms and a ban on the sale of all animals in retail stores. Why should that be allowed to continue? It shouldn't. The species. Tax breaks for organisations genuinely committed to environmentally friendly policies. We want to increase support for research into the development of a post-carbon economy. So who are we? 
Well, our party was established in 2006 by a lady called Yasmin Dabu, who's now the CEO of the Vegan Society, and a man called Sean Rutherford. Now, Yasmin Dabu is from the Netherlands. She came over after involvement with PVDD in the Netherlands, and Sean Rutherford were, is from the UK. And they were both inspired by the success of the party in the Netherlands and wanted to set something similar up here. So we began in 2006, we contested our first elections in 2008, another one in 2009, that was the EU election, and then the general election in 2010. Now, we are run entirely by volunteers from 2006 until today. So everyone involved has a day job. None of our committee of national officers have been career politicians. Everyone earns their living by another means and does their work in, uh, in the Animal Welfare Party on a voluntary basis. Now, I'm Vanessa Hudson. I took over the leadership in 2010. From 2006 to 2013, we were known as Animals Count. In 2012, we voted to change the name of our party to the Animal Welfare Party, and that process of changing our name has actually been going on for the past year. We're now known as the Animal Welfare Party, although some of our Facebook page, for example, and LinkedIn profiles still call us Animals Count. They're in the process of changing but uh, we're known mainly now as the Animal Welfare Party. And that was so that people could understand more clearly that we're a political party. <coughs> now, our committee of national officers is just three people. We have the leader, a nominating officer, a treasurer, and as we also have a, a veterinary spokesperson or advisor, but they're not part of our committee of national officers. Now, our veterinary spokesperson from 2007 to 2012 was Dr. Andrew Knight, who I mentioned earlier. Um, he has now moved to the Caribbean to teach at a vet school there. And we have Andre Minosh as our veterinary advisor right now. And we're very happy to have Andre on board. He's a super talented, very well-known um, veterinary <coughs> spokesperson. And uh, I don't know if you know anything about Andre anyone here, but he's just a lovely guy and so committed to uh, making changes for animals. So I'm Vanessa, I'm also the candidate for London, the prospective candidate for London in the EU elections. And you might want to know a little bit more about me, so let me tell you, I, my day job, I'm a freelance producer, director in the media industry. I've been vegan for 18 years. I've always had an interest in setting positive examples of veganism. Um, so some people here might know me from Vegan Runners. I was a press officer for Vegan Runners for a while before I took on this role. Now, until 2010, I had no plans to become a politician. And my involvement with the Animal Welfare Party stemmed from actually wanting to make a documentary about them. I, I heard about them, I thought what they were doing was history in the making, and I felt surely that someone should record this, someone should document it, it was so significant. I went along to a few of their meetings, and after a couple of meetings, I was sold. I wanted to get involved. Uh, and I did what every journalist shouldn't do, which is fall in love with your subject. I fell in love with the subject of animal welfare politics. I became the leader. Uh, and I felt from that day to this day that what the party is trying to do is so significant that, significant that I had no choice but to get involved and help make that happen. And I hope some of you in this room today might also realise that you have no choice but to get involved and make this happen. So the EU elections. They take place on the 22nd of May, that is a Thursday, uh, it's 164 days away, or just over five months away. Now, why are we so happy about the EU elections? Because they're based on a system of proportional representation. The UK has 12 constituencies that elect representatives back to the EU Parliament. We have announced that we will stand in the constituency of London, at the very least. Whether we stand in any other constituencies depends entirely on fundraising. Unfortunately, it is all about money. It costs £5,000 per constituency to put a candidate there. We don't have the funds right now to put a candidate in each constituency, but if there's anyone rich in the room today who <laughs> believes that should happen and would like to come forward, please do. We would take it gratefully. Um, but the other reason we're so excited about the EU elections is that for the first time ever, the animal parties of five European countries are contesting the EU elections. And we all have a shared goal. And that shared goal is to return a dedicated representative, all representatives, for animals to the EU Parliament for the first time ever in May. And those countries are the Netherlands, Spain, Germany, Portugal, 
and the UK. And we're very proud to be part of that movement. So, earlier in the, this year, we went to The Hague, Dimple and I over there, we met with the leaders of the other parties. There are other parties there that I haven't mentioned who aren't standing in the EU elections. Parties of Turkey, uh, the Danish party is not standing, the Italian party is not standing. But there we have the leaders of parties from Spain, Portugal, Germany, Netherlands. Um, and yeah, we are working together. This is a pan-European campaign and this has never happened before in history. So, if any one of us succeeds in returning a dedicated representative for animals to the EU Parliament in May, what will that mean? Well, for me, that will be history in the making. It will be a major step in the fight against speciesism. And for me, that would be a moment as significant as any in the history of human rights or women's rights. So let's look at the statistics. Is this going to happen? How likely is it to happen? 13,201. That's the number of votes animals count, the former name of our party. That's the number of votes we received in the eastern region of England in the last European elections we stood in. That was on the back of no campaign, very little funds, once again, very little funds, which was also not much leafleting. Out of nowhere, we got 13,000 votes. Now, that number in the middle is the estimated number of vegetarian and vegan members of the electorate in London. Not the number of people in London who are vegetarian or vegan, but the members of the electorate. That's people who are eligible to vote. There are estimated to be 531,000. Now, how many votes do we need to win the seat in London? Around 140,000 votes. It's not an exact science, we can't give you an exact figure. We estimate it to be around 140,000 dollars. Now, if vegetarians and vegans are warm to our policies, and you might think that a few of them would be, how many people do we need to win a seat? Do we have enough people there to win a seat? Well, yes, of course we do. We have more than enough people to win a seat. So our problem is not that there aren't enough people who are warm to our policies who believe what we believe. It's just that we need to convince those people in the middle to vote. And we know that 67% of them, if they do what they did last time, are likely to vote. So we need to convince the vegetarians and the vegans of London to vote. So, 531,000, the estimated number of vegetarians and vegans in London, amongst the electorate. We have immense power if only we would decide to use it. That number, you might be happy to know, is more, much more, <coughs> the number of people who voted Conservative in the 2009 EU elections. When I showed you those figures earlier and I said look at the top, look at the Tories with their three seats, well they got their three seats on something like 325,000 votes. We have 531,000 vegetarians here, we are more powerful than the Tories. If only we would decide to get together and use that power. So the 2014 EU elections, we say we have everything to play for. And when we don't vote, what we do is we let the Tories and you win. We give away that voice and we stop animal issues from being heard. 140,000 votes represents just one in four of the estimated number of vegetarians eligible to vote in the London constituency. And everything we want for animals today is within our grasp. So, if you like what we're saying and you think you want to get involved, well, please pledge to vote. You can pledge to vote for Animal Welfare Party on our website today. You can go to our stall downstairs in the main hall. You can pledge to vote on paper if you prefer to vote on paper. Pledge to vote on paper. You can have your photo taken with a placard saying, I'm voting AWP. Have your photo taken. Help us by allowing us to use that image in our marketing and PR campaigns. Those, those photos have gone down tremendously well. If you'd like to get involved and have a photo taken, please do. Lots of people have already pledged to vote AWP, people from all walks of society, old, young, middle class, working class, not working. So how do we reach all the animal advocates in London? This is a key question for us, because we know that people believe in our policies when they hear about them, but how do we get the words to them? Well, fundraising is absolutely crucial 
to our spreading the word about our party. And if we don't raise the funds that we need, we can't give animals the chance that they deserve. Currently, we have a crowdfunding campaign sitting on a website called Indiegogo. I don't know if you know that site or not. And it has some unique perks, some amazing things. So if you're looking for a unique Christmas present to give to someone, dinner with Andre Menashe, for example, he's listed in Who's Who, Medicine and Science. What about dinner with Andre Menashe as a unique Christmas present that no one else could buy? Look on our Indiegogo fundraising campaign. There are tons of ideas on there for ways that you can get involved. And the funds that we're trying to raise, they are essential to us being able to do a proper job for animals between now and May. Those funds will cover leaflet printing, enough to reach every single household in London. If we can print the leaflets, Royal Mail will distribute them for free. That's amazing. We can't afford to turn that offer away. And yet, right now, we don't have enough money to print 40, uh, 3 million leaflets to give to every household in London. But if, if everyone here in London donates a pound, if all the vegetarians and vegans in London donated just one pound, we would have 500,000 pounds. If every vegetarian in the UK donated a pound, we'd have six million pounds. So there is enough money out there, and we're not asking for a lot. We're saying give a tiny little bit, pass the word <coughs> on. Tell people that we're trying to raise funds for the EU elections, and those funds are crucial for us to do the kind of work for animals that needs to be done. So we welcome any donation. From 5p to 1 million pounds, if there's anyone in the room here with that 1 million burning hole in their pocket. So please, whatever you can afford, please do donate it to our campaign today or before the 31st of January, of uh, December. You can take a leaflet or two, ask if you can put it up in your local cafe, veterinary surgery, meditation centre, etc. Wear our AWP t shirt, John over there is wearing one. They're 11 pounds on our store, wear it with pride, explain to people what it means. Tell your friends that we're trying to win a seat in 2014. Ask them if they're registered to vote. We know that 67% of people did not vote last time. So we need to be asking people, are you registered to vote? And if not, why not? <coughs> invite us to talk to your group. If you have a group that might be interested in hearing about us, please invite us to talk to your group. And extremely important, find us on Facebook and Twitter. We're still known as Animals Cow on Facebook. Twitter, find us and make a commitment to sharing our posts and tweets every day or once or twice a week. Every little helps as long as you do it regularly, as long as you believe that you're playing a role and that your sharing of that tweet or that Facebook post is a crucial part of history in the making. Please adopt that attitude to this because we can't do it without you. There are AWP t-shirts there. We've had some young and friendly people wanting them recently and we hope that many more will, maybe pass on around if you can get them. What else can you do? You can become a member. It's £8.50 if you're not working, £12 if you are. You can become a supporter. It's free. <coughs> do you have regular spare time? Could you take on a role? We need more people, more volunteers to be involved regularly. If you want to get involved, please email info <coughs> at animalscount.org. Or if you have your own ideas for how we can spread the word, how we can reach all those vegetarians and vegans in London, please send them in. We don't have all the answers. We know that there are probably some brilliant ideas out there that we don't know about. So please send them in. Don't be shy. Info at animalscount.org. There's other help that we need, quite specific help in our office. We need designers. This is, I'm talking on a voluntary level. Unfortunately, we don't have the funds to pay at the moment. We need designers. We need photographers. We need office and general <coughs> volunteers. If you, know, if you are someone or know someone who might be able to get involved, please, once again, email info at animalscount.org. There are 164 days left to change history for animals. And if it's not you who's going to help us do it, then who? We are the top, richest 8% of the people in the world. I'll say that again. We are extremely lucky. If we're not going to do it, then who is? So the future. Well, I think that those who fight speciesism today have marked in common with those who stood up against slavery in the 1800s and those who fought and continue to fight against both racism and sexism. I think we should be proud to be part of this movement. I know sometimes it's difficult, <coughs> sometimes it means a bit of sacrifice, but I thank you, each and every one of you here today, for being here, for caring, and for listening to this talk. 
And there will be a day when animals are not exploited and they live lives free from unnecessary suffering. But I say, how quickly we get there, how quickly we get to that point depends on you. And it depends on your friends and your friends' friends. We need all of you to spread the word. So thank you very much for coming today to this British tour. Please visit us downstairs on our store, the main wall, support us, like us on Facebook, follow us. And if you believe in what we're trying to do, then please vote for us on the 22nd of May 2014. Thank you.